like to like to call the uh, January 2nd uh, school committee meeting to order. Uh, actually, January 2nd, 2020. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, as as many know, uh, the uh, purpose to call this meeting was, uh, and I take full responsibility, uh, was an error in uh, open meeting law at our last meeting uh, with regard to discussing uh, the superintendent's contract. Uh, we did uh, we did vote uh, in in a uh, executive session and uh, that should have been done uh, in open session. So again, I, I apologize for that. It wasn't uh, done on purpose. Uh, the other uh, thing that came to our attention and it's actually under the under the uh, lines of something we we've, we've always done but we've been doing it incorrectly and uh, we'll correct that immediately is the uh, way we uh, put out our our agenda uh, with regard to uh, executive session and uh, I think in this particular instance mm -hmm. we put it to discuss uh, non-represented personnel uh, we will in the future uh, be more specific as to who that is because that's more than that's that would be uh, more than one individual so uh, you know would would in this sense should have said uh, to discuss the uh, superintendent's contract so uh, that that will uh, be corrected uh, one other uh, context I wanted to bring up before we, we start our discussion uh, and there was a by the way a sign up sheet going or was for just because there's so many people here that sign up to speak uh, in the public uh, everyone can speak and you can speak more than once it's just just to keep some order to it there was a sign up sheet so just so everyone knows that uh, so you know this this was brought uh, this particular topic was brought to uh, my attention and uh, the vice chair's attention <clears throat> uh, sometime in November uh, by the superintendent as a point of discussion. Uh, you know, as the chair, uh, I certainly could have uh, said, "We're not, we're not going to discuss that." No, uh, I don't. That that's the end of it. Uh, I've never operated that way, and uh, I felt as if it should be brought to the committee, uh, which is what was done, uh, which is what brought us to, to the meeting on the 19th of December. If I had not put that on the agenda, then it would have never, that discussion would have never occurred, but I felt like it wasn't a decision that I should just make on my own without uh, so uh, you know in hindsight I you know I don't know whether I would have done it differently maybe <laughs> uh, but uh, it is what it is uh, which uh, brings us to tonight and you know one of the things I've been struggling with uh, and I've had this this conversation with the superintendent and, and, and Ms. Borowski is uh, Kind of the dialogue that's out there is that uh, the the timing of it just doesn't look good, uh, and uh, it just no matter how you look at it, doesn't look good uh, because of an election coming up, and uh, and you know I I felt like I was taking something out of the hands of of a of a a future committee for, for this committee to decide but you know I was we had conversations and went back and forth and uh, I guess I, I, I felt comfortable uh, in doing that uh, having said that and a lot of reflection uh, and and you know I, I, I really have, have continued to come back to what my original feeling was I just don't think it, it helps anybody uh, for us to do anything uh, uh, tonight, uh, uh, I think that uh, you know this. This, and I'll throw this out to the committee. This is something that 
uh, we should consider uh, discussion, we should consider tabling and leaving it to some time after March 3rd and leaving it up to, uh, to, the, uh, to a future school committee. Uh, you know, if you had a turnover of one, uh, maybe, but being that we're going to have uh, half the committee uh, uh, new, yeah, it just it just doesn't look right to me for us. To, as this has this is not any value judgments on the superintendent's performance or any. I'm not even getting into that. That's not part of what my my thought process is. Just the process itself. Uh, I don't think that. Uh, it's the timing is right, and I've kind of always felt that way, and and uh, really feeling that way. So I, I've said enough. I don't know if anyone else. Yes, I do. I'm. Uh, this is, I guess, an example of how open meeting law works. Because I did not know you were going to say that at all, um, and I feel the opposite way. Um, I feel we shouldn't table this and out of all due respect with a switch that's coming in the school committee um, I feel that and I, I prepared something actually because I get tongue-tied and I go on too long so I prepared something um, that speaks to what you were talking about six years ago and then again three years ago I was given a sacred trust I was elected to the school committee by the people of Reading to use my best judgment in making decisions that impact our schools, to make the best decisions I can that ultimately impact our students, our teachers, our administration, our district, and our community. There are five of us on the school committee that have likewise been elected. We were elected, so we were elected to make these decisions, with our sixth having been selected by the school committee and the select board two groups of diverse officials elected by the people of Reading. It's the job of our committee to make decisions relating to policy, budget, and the superintendent in a timely fashion. And it's the job of our committee members to listen to all members of the public, learn from our meeting agenda presentations from our staff and administration, and from the other school, and from the other school committee and related as members and related associations also grappling with similar challenges and decisions, like other school committees, Mass Association of School Committees. It's our job to make the best decisions possible with all of the information we have and learn. Speaking for myself, I know that what we do impacts the climate and the culture of the schools as well. I'm constantly learning and recently learned that our committee made two errors when we had our executive session to discuss the superintendent's contract. Neither of the errors related to our deliberations of his contract in executive session. The two errors were that we correctly, we, we correctly informed the public that we'd be discussing non-representative personnel, but we did not identify who we would be discussing and that it would be the superintendent, and that was our obligation we should have said we're discussing the superintendent's contract. The second mistake was that we did not vote again in public once executive session was over. I apologize for my ignorance and the resultant mistakes, and I appreciate that you're taking complete responsibilities, but there are six of us on the committee, and so that responsibility is really shared between six of us. However, I hold to my opinion that we as current school committee members had an obligation to make a decision to extend, well, to make a decision on Dr. Doherty's contract. And I still hold with my um, opinion that we should extend Dr. Doherty's contract and the school committee's decision in executive session. The date for this decision was either June 30th or it would default for the following year. For the time, expertise, and commitment, and may I say heart and soul, that Dr. Darty invests in our district and our community, Dr. Darty deserves better than us defaulting so that his contract is extended. He also deserves the extension to be decided by a school committee who has been working with him. MASC recommends that the Mass Association of School Committees recommends that new school committee members do not participate in the formal evaluation of a superintendent until they have been on the committee for around six months. 
the goal being that the new school committee members will have worked in their capacity with the superintendent before being put into a position to evaluate him. We were the school committee who evaluated him. We gave him good marks in contrast to some of the people's letters. Um, and our schools reflect the hard work of our teachers, staff, and administration with Dr. Doherty at the helm. I know that he has personally met with people who had questions about curriculum. He's advocated for his teachers when they have been challenged and it is appropriate to do so. And he worked very hard to help get the override passed so that our teachers would not lose their jobs, the district would not lose middle school foreign language, and so that we could persist in working towards a school district that educates all of our children as whole individuals, addressing their social, emotional, and behavioral needs as well as their academic needs. I know that not everyone is pleased with every curriculum, every decision, every interaction with Dr. Doherty. To please everyone is impossible, but he listens and he learns. That's my experience. He advocates for teachers and children at the state level as well as locally. That has been my experience. I think our school district and our leadership team and our children deserve high quality stability in the raucous storm that is raging in our country right now. I stand by my decision to extend our superintendent's contract, knowing that next year, the new committee will both review his progress towards goals, that's another misinformation, even though there's gonna be a two-year cycle, we did that in open session, there will be a review of his goals after a year. And I asked that multiple times during the meeting to ensure that. So the new committee will both review his progress towards goals and where his contract should head next. The upcoming committee has not lost control, but has gained time to make the right decisions when they have control. I believe good decisions will be made down the road and that we made the right decision for now. Thank you for this opportunity to share my opinion. I want to I want to echo a lot of the things that Dr. Doxer has said and I want to start by saying that the responsibility for the error is definitely shared by the committee. I appreciate your leadership and I appreciate your taking responsibility, but your response in the last week, um, Mr. Robinson, to my mind, shows the integrity that I've come to expect from you. I think you responded as well as could be expected, so I did want to say that. So thank you for that. Um, and that I take as much responsibility for the error as Mr. Robinson do does. Um, I share a lot of your thinking on this issue. I really do. Um, but as Mr. Robinson stated, we've had some conversations with the superintendent, and the fact is we did have a violation of open meeting law, and that does create mistrust in the community. And my concern is if we don't postpone it, does that vote end up, end up clouded, and do we end up inadvertently undermining the very person we are trying not to do that to? Um, so as difficult a decision as it is, um, I'm inclined to support the postponement. Mr. Park, um, I had a nice chance to catch up with uh, Ms. Borowski the day after the vote. Sorry, I didn't mean to invite you back. And the vote for me was a hard decision. Um, and the, the one thing that I kept coming back to personally was, are we circumventing the will of the people by doing this ahead of time? And my gut told me yes. Um, the way I voted did not support that, and I'll freely admit that. Um, at this time, I would agree with the chair and with Ms. Borowski that I think cabling is best. Um, it's not a light decision. It's been two solid weeks of, of reflection knowing that I am one-sixth of the committee that made a mistake. Um, Mr. Robinson, you cannot fall on the sword for all of us. It is all six. Um, we were all trained. We know OML. We made the mistake together. Um, hard decision, but I, I would agree with tabling this decision to a future date. Go ahead, Tom. Jeez. I mean, I, I'm somewhat in the unique circumstance of being the one who was asking to table this in the first place. Um, I do 
I'm I guess to that end, I'm in agreement with that point, really. Um, I don't think it's the time to make that decision. I think there's times to make that decision at a later point in time, uh, either way. Um, I will say, though, that I think there is, from my interpretation, and we can refer to our, our lawyer, there's a slightly different understanding of OML here, from my perspective. Um, going into that meeting, uh, my understanding was it was a negotiation. Um, about a contract renegotiation um, as opposed to a, an extension of an existing term in the contract. And those are fundamentally different things. And OML covers negotiation. It does not cover exercising extensions. Um, and so I think if, in hindsight, what we should have done from a lesson learned perspective, and again, we can refer back to our our counsel on this, but my understanding is what we should have done is as soon as it stopped being a negotiation and started being an extension, we should have left executive session and come back here to have the conversation. <coughs> we we, we, <coughs> we've already acknowledged yeah. that there was a, you know, the yeah. violation. So. I agree with that. I, I just think that there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a difference there. And negotiation is what the intent of section two of the OML executive session is. Um, and we didn't, we didn't end up doing any negotiation per se other than with ourselves, not with the, the person in which we were negotiating. Um, so I think that's, that's a minor difference, although it is technical to the letter of the law type question um, <coughs> about the intent. And I think to that end, it's important for us, uh, one, one suggestion would be to go and, and actually have our council come in and present on these particular gray areas, for lack of a better way to say, where is the line? and help us make sure we understand that in, in, firm, in full detail. Um, so in, in addition to the commitment that we're putting out there to make sure that we properly denote the reasons for executive session, I think we should also make sure we are very clear about where those lines are and when we're crossing it. Because I think there's also been a question that's been out there about the, the raise conversation. Um, now there's a very tricky line there as well because you start talking about personnel and personnel becomes private. So it's, there's a very tricky line to walk as a public body member when we go into these things. But there's, in fact, there's something directly on the Open Meeting Law webpage that says is a raised conversation covered under, un, under executive session, and it's, it's not. So we probably have that one to think about too, but it's technically past the 30 days. So long story short, I'm on the same page of tabling this until presumably after March 2nd, as the case may be. Um, but I think there's a few other things we need to take away from this as well. Uh, I just, yeah, I would just like to add that um, I, I did feel like we did have a very thorough discussion and, and a lot of points were brought up and, and really it was a very thoughtful decision. Obviously mistakes were made. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with tabling it because I think it is important to, to do some of this public discussion now before we actually do a vote and I think to you know, achieve all of that tonight is probably <clears throat> too big a task. So um, I'm comfortable with tabling it. Um, I don't otherwise have a lot of regrets about the, the level of how much thought and discussion we did put into it. And I, I do feel like um, it, it was an honest mistake. Dr. Doxton. So I appreciate the discussion about the legalities and um, revisiting going forward, but I think that your response, Chair, was to call this meeting right away. Um, and we have people here, and we have a public discussion that was posted. And so to table it indefinitely, I hear that that's about the future school committee member, and I recognize that I will not be on the committee, but I also recognize that three years ago I was elected to be on the committee to make these decisions. And so was Mrs. Borowski, and so were each of us. And so deferring because of, and I'm gonna step over a line, because of discussions on Facebook um, being a big part of what's going on, we're not hearing from the other people. We often don't hear from the people that think positive things. And I think that we've been working with the superintendent. We evaluated the superintendent. I think it's completely appropriate 
that we discuss, as we did, like Mrs. Callie said, for over two hours, whether we should extend the, the contract and not let it potentially be by default or being made by people that haven't worked with him in the capacity of school committee member. So I, I am against tabling it. I think that we're just sweeping it down the road and that the current school committee has as much responsibility as the upcoming school committee. Only this school committee has experience to rely upon and the others have what they're learning. We all know it takes a long time to get up to speed when you're becoming a school committee member. It doesn't happen overnight just because you're elected. I mean, if it does for other people, then I was a real slow learner, but I don't think it does. And so we have the experience, both as school committee members and with the superintendent, to make a decision to extend his contract and that, as I said, they will, the new committee will have a chance to revisit that in a year. And if they don't want to extend it at that point, that will be another discussion. They won't have an option to, to review it in a year. If there's good cause, that's written in the contract. If there's good cause to terminate the con, I have the contract here. If there is good cause to terminate the contract, then they will be able to do that. So I, I hold to my opinion, and I thank you for listening again. Oh. I, Sorry, I just want to bring up a procedural yeah. question, not about what you're discussing. So. What should be happening from a Robert's Rules perspective is that you make the main motion first, and then if you're going to go with a postponement, then you would have a postpone. It's not table, by the way. Right. It's, it's postponed. Um, get into that. Yeah, I just want it because technically there should be a discussion about the postponement after the main motion is made. I'll read the motion. <laughs> Move to exercise the school committee option to extend the superintendent's contract one year from the expiration date of June 2021 to an expiration date of June 2022. Is there a second? I'll second. And I'll read a motion to postpone. Uh, I'd rather have discussion on this first and then. It, it, that's, that's entirely up to you. So if there's no other discussion from the committee I I don't know if this the sign up sheet or who signed up first to speak or if anyone wants to speak all right uh, Jeffrey Coram or Ridge Road um, so I appreciate first of all the school committee acknowledging their mistake and calling this a meeting uh, meeting to address the open meeting violation uh, and I want to say I'm, I'm generally for the extension um, and a little unclear on the timing, which maybe is a second discussion after we get um, the, the motion to postpone. Um, you know, I, I see that we've gotten a great superintendent, as we see openly, you know, from the public side at least, with the development of the curriculum maps. And I see that we've got a great director of student services that we've, um, you know, had a lot of uh, positive feedback from. So I think it's reasonable to let this team work together for some time, um, you know, add, add on that year. Uh, going on with the, the positive momentum we've got from the override as well, um, and to give some certainty to the district leadership by extending the superintendent's contract for that extension. Um, so I, I thank Dr. Doxer for her comments on, on uh, how you've been elected to make decisions that need to be made when they need to be made. And I, you know, I, I think that you know, making that decision now might help take a little pressure off as we, you know, a second worry, something else to be thinking about as we move into the budget discussions, which are going to be long and involved discussions, I, I expect has, has been in the past. So thank you for your consideration. You. Mr. Enns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dan Ensminger, Six Oakland Road, uh, former <laughs> member of the Select Board. Uh, I have a couple of parliamentary points that I want to ask. 
the superintendent's views and your view on right now you do have a, a, a voted motion albeit in executive session and arguably one which could get overturned if someone filed a complaint would not the better first course of action be to rescind that vote take a vote to rescind your vote taken on whatever the date was on whatever the subject then you can proceed to a new motion and I think you can take that vote in open session so but, uh, I, uh, did, are you, that's my point yeah. Yeah. so I just I had that discussion uh, with our council this afternoon okay and her uh, advice to me was that the only vote that counts is the vote in open session okay so we don't have to do anything All right. with the vote. Do you covered the base. Thank you. Yes, this is down. Marianne, <clears throat> excuse me, Marianne Downing, 13 Heather Drive. Um, again, thank you for your prompt reconsideration and recognition of the different open meeting law issues. I agree with uh, Mr. Wise that perhaps um, a refresher on some of the things from council might be good. I've seen, I don't know if our council is Koppelman and Page anymore. They, I know they were TLT. They've done some great presentations to other towns like Weston. Um, that's the one I recall offhand. And they may be, you can even look at those, but something like that you can leverage. But actually, I'm here to speak about your other decision on the 19th, which is the one to, um, go to the election year every other year review cycle and I have various issues with that I sent you all an email on it but one of the things that was occurring to me as I drove over um, and I don't know if you've thought it through is depending on the year someone's elected within every other year cycle some people who are elected are only going to get to conduct a performance evaluation of the superintendent once consider someone who was elected in in 2020 so they don't get to do a review um, in 2020 um, 2020 because they're coming in and you've decided not to do it this year or you're going to do it before the election this is a skip year um, they get to do it in 2021 they skip in 2022 then 2023 if they're running for re-election maybe they do that pre-election review so that's fine they get two reviews someone elected in 2021 well that's a skip year um, they're not they, they don't do a review because they're elected that year 2022 is a skip year they get to do one in 2023 then 2024 is another skip year so they're running for election so they only get to review once so I guess when I think about your cycle unless I'm totally misunderstanding it you're really depriving future members. I mean, write it out, because I was doing it in my head and then I got here and wrote it out and said, does this make sense? So that's just a side issue. The other thing, um, it, it goes to something um, Mrs. Doxer said. One, I'm one of those people that reads all of your reviews every year. And it, it's actually, even if I don't always agree with it, it's a pleasure to read Mrs. Doxer's reviews because they are so thorough and so considered and she justifies all her points. And she's done that since day one. And when I say day one, I mean when she was elected in 2014, having never been on the school committee before. Yet she and Mrs. Webb, who, even though she was a prior member, she hadn't been on for three years, they both got to do full, full reviews several months after being elected. And I guess I just don't know why you don't trust, and all the candidates are here. I, I think they deserve that consideration that you, you and Mrs. Webb were given to be able to be entrusted to use their judgment to do a review. It was brought up during, during your deliberation on, um, oh, it'll be so much work for candidates. They may have to, should they have to go back and watch the YouTube videos? I say yes. If you want my endorsement and my vote, if you're running for this office, you should be watching the YouTube videos. You should be watching every meeting and reading all the minutes if you want to be on this board to be prepared to review the superintendent. And, you know, and I also noted in my email to you that um, you're going to have to, if you're going to stick with this every other year vote, it violates the superintendent contract. Clause 15 expressly says um, he needs a review every year. And I don't know whether this changes the compensation review because, because that's dependent on a favorable review. And that, you know, that won't be fair to him if he has to go to an every other year compensation review. 
So I guess my point with this is I'm not comfortable with that decision. Um, I guess just one other point I wanted to make um, when you finally get to the email I sent today, I quoted from the 2019 DESI guidance. And I'll just read briefly from it in case you haven't had time. When they talk about review timeline, they said, a one-year cycle for superintendents in their first three years is important. At the semicolon, at the committee's discretion, it may be extended to two years for superintendents working under extended contracts, although annual goals are still strongly recommended. And it mentions, you know, at the start, that at, there needs to be three public meetings each year dealing with evaluation at the start to establish goals and focus indicators, which you all did on October 28th. In the middle, meet to examine progress on goals and make mid-course adjustments. At the end, meet to assess whether goals have been achieved, et cetera, et cetera. And I think you guys had a great deliberation the other week, but you never got to how you're going to work all this out and what are going to be the goals you're going to go on. And I also will just read one last part from this DESI guidance. It says, many committees have shifted from an evaluation cycle governed by the local election cycle to one that matches the school year cycle with goals established in the late summer or very early fall and summative evaluation done in the late spring or early summer. So I don't know, you know, DESI is, is saying districts are going toward what we've been doing all along. So I'm a little puzzled why we're why we're changing it. It just doesn't seem like a best practice. I think you should trust all of these candidates the same way you were trusted when you were elected. And I would respectfully ask that you revisit that decision as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Downing. So uh, appreciate the uh, comments. I, we, we as a committee can't discuss that tonight because that wasn't on the agenda, but uh, we can certainly, I can certainly have that discussion revisited with, uh, with the new committee uh, when that, after March 3rd, March 3rd. Mrs. Phillips. Happy New Year, um, Linda Phillips, Willow Street. Um, I could faintly hear you in the back, which is why I moved in front of the speaker, because I'm sure you're being recorded well, but the room just, it's, it's quite um, very mild, the hearing. Um, I wanted to ask, is this discussion tonight specifically about the illegal action that took place um, on the 19th? when you had the executive session. Is this specifically about that? Well, the, the meeting was called as a result of that action. Uh, and I understand. Discuss the, uh, if you were here in the, I, I fully uh, acknowledge that that happened. Yes. And this meeting is trying to, to rectify, to rectify. that during public. So the action that was taken is now nullified. Um, I mean, did you, by a public acknowledgement that something was, that shouldn't have happened, is that enough to say we don't need to see the draft minutes of the executive session? Or are you going to allow the executive session draft minutes to be made public? Because um, I don't think there's been any conversation about who voted which way and who supported what. And I think the public needs to know because you all are accountable to us because that may affect the next election. So the, uh, I'm not, Linda, you can help. I'm not sure exact, those executive session minutes would become public at some point. I'm not. Uh, so you have to actually vote to release them in public. Is that something you're prepared to do this evening? Are you reviewing any minutes no, tonight? Been, they haven't been even approved yet. yet by the school committee. Well, they don't have to be. Draft minutes are available the minute um, you have a meeting, at the end of the meeting. They don't have to be approved or anything. You can get them with typos. So I've no, been so, down the open right, meeting. So I'll, I'll answer your question. No, we're not going to So you're not going to vote. So that will be on the agenda next time, that you will vote to 
release the executive session minutes of December 19th. If they've been voted on by the committee and approved. We no, the draft minutes, again, do not have to be voted on by the committee. I'll, I'll, I'll have to check on that. Um, so because you admitted that you participated in something that was illegal, you're going to rectify it by postponing it for another occasion when, after the new school committee members are elected. Is that correct? That, that has been put out there. We haven't officially taken a vote on that yet. Okay. Well, I, I would like to speak to that issue then um, because I, I made a list of so many concerns people had and I just want to make sure that they're all that you all are aware of them. The fact, uh, I think you're taking responsibility for the fact that um, because you held an illegal executive session by not mentioning the nature of the business to be discussed, that was two counts, failing to state the name of the person whose contract it was you were discussing in open session, that didn't happen. Um, there was, was there any public rationale why there needed to be a vote to extend the superintendent's contract out of context of his performance review? Can you, I don't there, in other words, there had to be a reason why this subject came up in executive session because it never was discussed in an open session that you were going to continue to give a performance review to the superintendent because I'm assuming performance review in any contract discussion are the same thing or are they different? subjects well the performance review happens first right that happened in September was it in September later than that and then I think it was October or, uh, and then following that either that same night or a subsequent night we we would uh, meet in executive session to discuss uh, compensation or contract and then come out in an in open session and revote uh, those what happened in an executive session. We did not do that on the 19th. My error. I'm sorry, on the 19th of December? December. When we were discussing the extension, it didn't contemplate any level of compensation change. Right. So my misunderstanding was that we had to only vote if we changed compensation, which we didn't do, and I was incorrect. In okay, so uh, apparently there are two separate matters then, performance review and compensation. It wasn't a performance review right. in the meeting. It was discussion. The performance review was done earlier. Earlier. Yes. This was a, subs a, a separate conversation regarding uh, the contract extension and you know obviously uh, people would have had performance past performance reviews on their mind in making that decision no but okay but okay in the performance review was not discussed in executive session okay so then it's important to understand the context of why this subject that was never mentioned in an an open public school committee meeting that there was ever going to be another discussion about extending the contract because that discussion needs to take place in public and it needs to be on the agenda in order for it to be discussed. And we've established that mistake. Okay. So when that, ha uh, so that was a mistake because it wasn't mentioned earlier that it was coming up. It wasn't mentioned at the night that it was coming up. So, um, and by the, um, so the rationale to make the change of discussing a contract extension, we don't know what started that. What's, what was, as who I, raised that as an issue to have I a meeting? brought up in the, uh, at the outset of this meeting, uh, the superintendent had a discussion uh, with myself and the vice chair about whether we would be willing to do this. Mm -hmm. And I made the decision at that time to bring it to the entire committee, which got us to eventually uh, on the, the 19th. Okay, okay, so I, I understand. 
now. Um, but the fact that it was brought up, that whoever brought it up, the superintendent or you, that it was out of context of a performance review or there was really no reason to bring it up when the contract doesn't expire till I mean, June. That's your opinion, I guess. He's within his rights to advocate for himself. Oh, uh, sure. Yes, I understand. I that's all he was doing. Okay. Uh, and uh, when, he br when he brings that up, uh, I don't necessarily think it has to be it could be any time. It doesn't necessarily right. have to be. It could be I, I got another job offer somewhere. I need, a, I need you to do something for me. Or so mm -hmm. It could be mm -hmm. at any time. It uh, doesn't have to be immediately following the uh, performance evaluation. Okay, but the timing of it before, you know, just a few months before other members uh, and a significant amount of members are going to be elected, that just made it a little concerning, and like there I, wasn't. I, 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 again, I, I said that earlier, too. You know, I mean, it, this is, you know, I, I appreciate your, your thoughts. It, 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 I'm not trying to hide anything. No, I'm not, I'm not saying you were, just it's better understood. More transparency is, is better understood than less. Um, and did you realize that by voting to extend his contract actually violated his current contract in that you were not voting to modify his contract? You weren't, in other words, your reason to go in executive session should have been to have a discussion about whether you're going to revise his contract, not to extend his contract. Because by extending his contract, by a vote of the school committee violates his present contract. So, I mean, it's important to understand what you actually did wrong no, uh, because to take ownership to make sure it doesn't happen again. So, the way the contract is written in, uh, I was involved in, in rewriting this a year or two, I guess two years ago. Two now. years ago, yes. Uh, the on or before June 30th, uh, right. 2020, we would have to have a vote of the committee to extend for one year. So is the contract that he, the superintendent's in right now expires on June 30th, June 30th 2021. 2020. And this would extend that to June 30th, 2022. So we weren't in violation of that that provision as, as far as well, I, mean, I really don't think so. I, I, th I think there was, but um, so you're, you're going to postpone a discussion on whether uh, you're going to put it on another, uh, for another meeting, just to have a discussion, a public discussion, and a vote by the new school committee, I mean, that's going to be proposed. Are you going to vote on that tonight? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Carolyn Nazaro. Hello. I'm Carolyn Nazaro, 32 Redgate Lane. Um, I, I have three comments, but uh, they've been whittled down a little bit. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank you for your commitment to the students of Reading and to the well-being of the children in our district. I would also like to thank you for recognizing the issues with the open meeting law violation for um, the public communication that Mr. Robinson sent out and for calling today's meeting. I certainly don't think there was any malintent with this issue, but a simple mistake. Um, I had three quick points, but I've whittled them down to just one. Um, in reference to, in regards to the vote in open session to change the superintendent's performance review cycle to an every other year cycle. As a person who may be possibly on the committee in the near future, I would like to be afforded the same opportunities as previous members to determine if I would participate or forego the review process. I would look at the process and what is required and then determine if I'm able to participate or not. In the past, I know that some on this board have chosen to participate and some have chosen not to participate. 
and I respect those decisions. Um, if I were elected, I would appreciate appreciate being afforded those same opportunities. Um, and my other two issues have been addressed. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, as, as I, Carl, as I said to uh, Ms. Downing, uh, that we, that's not on the agenda tonight, so we're, we won't have a discussion on it, but I'm certainly open to having a discussion about that with the uh, new committee. Yes, Ms. Downing. I just wanted to give one um, quick follow-up, I think, to something Ms. Mrs. Um, Phillips brought up. Um, in the course of reading about open meeting law and like that Copeland and Page presentation I referenced before, um, there is qu quite a lot in there about the timing of when to release executive session minutes. And I may not be stating it exactly correctly, but I believe it's when, you, when the minutes no longer need to be kept confidential for the purpose of why you went into executive session, you can release those minutes. And in looking at the town website, I don't think this committee has released executive session minutes since 2017. So there may be some other minutes that certainly can be released. For example, whatever the executive session minutes were, when you initially um, put out Dr. Doherty's contract, um, I believe it was June 18th, 2018. And, and th that agenda had a comment like return from executive session to vote on superintendent contact and compensation. Well, that contract is out there. It's done. It's public. You should be able, to the extent there's parts of the executive session minutes that relate to that, you're, the board's position is not in jeopardy, so I don't we, believe. We voted uh, in the uh, sp late spring, early summer, uh, Linda. June 20th. June, I was in that uh, year. On a bunch of executive session minutes to be released, uh, right? I no, mean, they weren't to be released. They, to you, be you actually to approve them. Approve them. Now they've been approved. Yeah. So, so you just need to tell Laura Jemmy, possibly, because some maybe they the process, still need to be kept confidential, like, you know, collective bargaining negotiations or something. I think the process, and the process was is that we are to review them first with legal counsel before that they're released. Okay. That's the discussion we had with legal counsel on the release of any of those. Okay. Well, anyway, it was just that that's, that's the standard. So for example, like November 7th when you voted on the raise and you went into executive session, the raise happened, that's done. What's the reason for those minutes to be kept confidential? Some people in other decisions have, have made a big deal and filed complaints, and I don't think that's necessary here, but that again just points to um, what Mr. Wise said, and I think what I said, that a, a good refresher on some of these things may be helpful, because I know you guys try your hardest to be transparent, and that's why I was as shocked as everyone else with what happened on the 19th, and I'm glad you took care of it, because that's not you guys. You're very transparent. Thank you. I made the first motion. I don't believe I made a motion to postpone. Go ahead. So I'm going to move to postpone the main motion of exercising the school committee option to extend the superintendent's contract until a subsequent school committee meeting after March 3rd, 2020. Third. Second. I have a question on that. So it would fall under discussion of that. So um, I'm not sure why it has to happen after March 3rd. I understand it's out of respect for the new school committee members, but there's also a respect issue of the standing school committee members who will lose our voice if it waits till after there. And we were voted in to have a voice. Yeah, that just comes down to a matter of opinion, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes. I mean, I'm trying to be respectful. That's, I get you know, it. That's, you know, your, your thought process, and I respect that. And Any other discussion? Yes. I guess I do have to say, I, when I kept hearing the phrase, you know, circumventing the will of the people, I, 
that seemed a little harsh to me because I like we are the people also. So whether it's these people or those people, I hope that we're all trusting that we are all making the best decisions that we can. Um, and that's how I feel. And I do feel like we have been working hard to make those decisions. So I just want to put that out there. Okay. All those in favor of the vote? Opposed? Thank you. I think move to adjourn. First, uh, first of all, I'd like to, to thank the uh, public for, uh, in, you know, uh, indulging us and listening and uh, showing a lot of respect tonight. And, uh, thank you for that. Uh, so. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you.